And then the song I thought was, was very, very interesting. We were working at Terrors from a recording studio. When he opened up and sang, he went, whoa, this guy's got it. Rodriguez, at that time, had all the machinery in place. Big names, big money behind it. Circumstances were right. Why didn't it make it? That's the big question that today still haunts me. Did he get enough promotion? Did he do enough performances? Was he too political? Was there this or was there that? Should it have been green instead of orange? Should it have been a violin instead of an oboe? On and on you could go. But the end of the day is if you listen to the stuff now, you say, I don't understand it. He's right on. I only heard him play once. And uh, one of the songs that he had on his album, it was called uh, The Sugar Man. Was it Sugar Man? Is that the name of the song? Um, I knew that guy, the Sugar Man, and his name was uh, Volkswagen, Char Volkswagen Frank. And he lived right around the corner and used to go over to Volkswagen Frank's. You could go in and get a little sugar, if you know what I mean. Sugar Man, won't you hurry? Cause I'm tired of these scenes. For the blue corn, won't you bring back? All those colors to my dreams Silver magic ships you carry Jumpers, Coke, Sweet Mary Jane Sugar Man met a false friend On a lonely, dusty road Lost my heart I've got some photos here that I'd like to show you that I've kept since my days in England with Rodriguez. Let me see. Possibly it's in this book. I don't know, I don't know where. And these are all my photos from when I was acting. That's me, and that's Jimmy Dean. That was in 1955. Hang on, I think I, got, I, think I found them. I think they're in here. Yeah, here they are. Wow, good Lord, here they are. You know, I haven't seen these pictures in almost 35 years. He's my most memorable artist. You know, I've produced a lot of great ones, but he's my most memorable. He's not just a talent. He's like, he's like a, a wise man, a prophet. He's way beyond just being a, a musical artist. And he probably could have done fantastically well if he had continued. When I met him, they said, uh, Rodriguez, this is Steve Rowland. He really likes your album. And, and Rodriguez said to me, well, did you like Cold Colfax? I said, man, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I can't believe that this album didn't do anything. It's this fantastic album. So he played me what his next album was. Uh, he had, in those days, he had cassettes. He had demos of this next album. He was going to call Coming From Reality. And uh, I said, wow, man, this has got to be a smash. These are great songs. A little bit, little bit different from the others, I said, but great songs. I said, and a couple of them were so sad. You know, there's one in there that's absolutely a killer. It's one of the saddest songs that, I'm laughing, but it's one of the saddest songs that uh, I've ever heard. And it's a very simple song. Hang on, I want to play this. Hang on. Okay, it's in these words. Because I lost my job Two weeks before Christmas. Oh, man. <laughs> and I talked to Jesus at the sewer. And the Pope said it was none of his goddamn business. While the rain drank champagne, my Estonian archangel came and got me wasted. 
Cause the sweetest kiss I ever got Is the one I've never tasted And it really makes me sad because that was the last song that we recorded. And that was the last song that Rodriguez ever recorded. And what makes it even sadder was the album was released in November of 1971. And we expected big things. And it did absolutely nothing. And then two weeks before Christmas, Sussex dropped him off the label. And the very first line in the song, as if premonition was, I lost my job two weeks before Christmas. Oh man, I just think about that. This guy deserves recognition. Nobody in America had even heard of him. Nobody 